take your swords this morning and turn to Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah 18, as we continue our thoughts in this series, uh, clay, everybody say clay, clay in the potter's hand, clay in the potter's hands, clay in the potter's hands. Thank you, uh, Sherry and, and Kristen for that song. That was awesome. And right to our point of our message today, uh, we need God to mold us and make us. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. Um, you get there, turn, stand to your feet, and we'll read from God's Word. Jeremiah chapter 18. This has been an interesting uh, kind of journey here as we've been studying this. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, personal application to all of us. And then today we're going to really talk about um, in verses uh, on down where it's talking to, to nations. And God is speaking to Jeremiah before he's going to go give the final message to the people there. Uh, and we're going to look at that today. Look at verse 1. Let's begin there in 18, chapter 18, verse number 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house. And there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? says the Lord, look as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of this disaster that I, brought, that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Verse 11, now therefore speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, thus says the Lord, behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. Let's pray. Father, we just again ask your spirit to work in my life and the life of each of us here today. May your word just become uh, the engrafted word that we just, we hear, we respond, and then we take it home with us, Lord, as you just continue to wash us with your word. Uh, Lord, I, I pray today that, God, your will would be accomplished here. God, your purpose, your plan for me and for all of us, God, we would see it today. We would understand it today. We would embrace it today, and we'd find ourselves in obedience uh, towards it today. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Be seated, okay? So again, we come to verses 7 uh, and following there uh, in, that, in that particular chapter there in, in, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 18. And we were, talk, we're going to talk about, again, I think we mentioned this last week, his preeminence. Now, uh, the word preeminent is in the meaning uh, in our English dictionary is to be dominant above all others, uh, having the only authority or being the only authority. And then over in the New Testament, we talked about that uh, a long time ago when I first came. Uh, we talked about the lordship of Jesus Christ, the lordship of Christ, uh, Preeminence means to be first, to be chief, to be first rank. Uh, he is preeminent. God, we know God is preeminent. Jesus in Colossians is talking about the preeminence of Jesus. And here we're talking about the fact that God the potter is in charge of uh, what he does with the clay and the purpose he has for the clay and all those things. But we're talking again about his preeminence. Everybody say preeminence. Again, to be dominant above all others, the only authority. Um, 
not only over people individually as a potter, God has every right. We've talked about this. Uh, God having the right to, to choose for me and for you exactly what he wants to do with my life and with your life, uh, how he wants to use us, where he wants to place us and plant us. I was listening to a preacher a few days ago. He was talking about, um, you know, we seem to have this thought in our mind as Americans, especially, uh, that uh, you know, uh, we get a little uh, out of sorts because we, let's just say our, we don't like our boss, we don't like our coworkers, uh, we don't like our job, uh, so we just continue to complain and we gripe and we moan and we, you know, we share that with anybody that will listen, you know, that's what we come up, you know, it's almost sometimes you go up to people and you really hate to ask them how they're doing because you know what you're about to hear, okay? Anybody know anybody like that? Listen, God's people shouldn't be that way. We as God's people, God has given us a purpose and a plan. He places us and plants us exactly where he wants us to be. And listen, he wants to use us wherever he puts us. If it's, a, if it's at uh, working at, at McDonald's, uh, Bella, you know, if it's, if it's working at McDonald's, if it's working uh, in, a, in a factory setting, if it's working at the bank, if it's working, uh, you, know, at a, you know, wherever it might be, wherever God puts us and places us there, he has put us there with a purpose and a plan. And he wants to use us as a light uh, for him to, to shine the light of Jesus to the people that we're around. Um, you say, well, preacher, you just don't know, you don't know where I'm at. You don't know what's happening. You just don't know that my boss, you don't know my coworker, you don't know my neighbor, you don't know my, you know, this, this, this. We could go on talking about that. And listen, I've been there. I've been there and done that. I've lived that. And I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you, I was the same complainer that some of you are, Okay. But what God has called us to do is he, he wants to flourish us right where he puts us and plants us. And I'm telling you, when I think about that, I think about us individually, but I also think about our church where God has, listen, God established and placed and planted this church several years ago for God to, to uh, establish and use the people that he places and plants here, plants here uh, to serve him, to glorify him, to draw people to him. And I'm telling you, that plan that God has has not changed. That's what he has called us to do. And, uh, and, and you know, in thinking about uh, clay in the potter's hands and how God is speaking to his people, we've talked about this and established this for the last several weeks, how, you know, God is dealing with his own people, with the nation of Israel. He is, he is uh, dealing with them as his, his, the apple of his eye, his treasure, his, his people that he has chosen to, to uh, walk with and to live in relationship with so that they could be a light to other nations, so that when they, could, when they looked at Israel, they, they didn't just see them they seen their God when people see us listen the difference we could make in America today and around the world is if they would just see, not necessarily see us and our especially our gripes and bickers and and complaining but if they could just see that we have a God who is on the throne a God who is in charge, a God who, who wants to bring peace and he wants to bring uh, life and he wants to give folks eternal life we have something that no one else has to offer. We have someone to offer to this world that nobody else has to offer. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And again, in this passage, and, and uh, we talk about God's preeminence. Um, again, not only with individuals as the potter, but also he's, he's reminding Jeremiah here as he's talking to him, he's at the potter's house and he's watching this potter do his work. And he says, listen, Jeremiah, that same clay that you may see as yourself, it's also the same for the nation of Israel. It's also for my people. They are like, they are like the, the clay in the potter's hands. And he talks about the fact that, you know, can I not take them? Can I not take you, Jeremiah, and my people? Can I not mold them and make them and use them for my glory and make them a benefit on this earth? His preeminence. Look at verse number seven. And again, he's, he's speaking to Jeremiah here. He's, he's about to reveal his, his message to him as he continues to, to reveal to him uh, what he wa wants to say and how he wants to use them as the prophet to his people. Uh, verse number seven says, uh, 
The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it. Now, we talked a little bit about that last time. We'll just go over this real quickly. Uh, when I pronounce judgment on a foreign uh, nation, he's talking about not, not his people, Israel. He's talking about a foreign nation. He's talking about a Gentile nation, someone who is not his chosen people. He says, listen, when I pronounce judgment on a nation or a people, to pluck up, to pull up by the roots, to forsake utterly, to pull down, to overthrow, to tear down, to beat down, to destroy it, to utterly cause, to perish, to bring to, to peril or to bring to non-existence, to be wiped off the face of the earth. He says, if, everybody say if. Yes. If's a good word in this passage. It says, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evils, on the condition that very nation or people, I, Yahweh, have appointed, have declared, have arranged judgment upon, repents, turns away, returns to the starting point, away from their wickedness and path of sinfulness before me. What he's saying is, is if I look at a nation and they are deserving of judgment, they are living outside of God's plan and God's purpose, and they are continuously running to wickedness and sinfulness, then, you know, I have said and, and, and I have told them and I have pronounced my judgment through my prophet that, listen, uh, that I'm going to tear you down. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to make you non-existent. You'll no longer be on this earth. I'm going to destroy you. He says... But there's something else. There's an if. If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, if it repents, if it turns away, I, I, I thought it interesting as I read uh, the Hebrew meaning there, returns to the starting point. In other words, listen. Remember the potter said if it gets messed up in the hands of, you know, it's on the wheel and it gets, get, it gets marred. What has to happen? The potter has to get a hold of it, and he begins to work on it again. What he's saying here is this nation who he's pronounced judgment on, and yet they've become marred, they've become sinful, and out of the will of God, they have to turn, and they have to repent. And they have to once again allow, to go back to that starting point where the potter himself has them. See, that's what repentance brings to you and to me. See, repentance for me and for you is when, is when I, I'm living a life outside of God's will. I'm in, I'm in sin. I'm, maybe I'm living in, in, in sin that nobody else knows about, but God knows about it. I'm living in sin. I'm out of God's will. I'm not, I'm not lost, but I'm in, not in fellowship with God. So in order for me to come back to fellowship with God is I have to come back and repent and turn away from that sin and turn to God. And basically what happens when I do that is I once again become a moldable, flexible piece of clay in the potter's hands. So what God is reminding Jeremiah here is, listen, even a foreign nation, Jeremiah, who I pronounce judgment on, I'm going to destroy them. They're no longer going to be anything on this earth, possibly even wiped out, done away with, all the way from the face of the earth. But if, on the condition that they repent and turn away and they come back to me and they allow me to put my hands on them once again and make them into another vessel that has purpose and a plan and the opportunity to be used and to point people to me, he says, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. I, Yahweh, you're personally involved on the spot, hands on God, will have mercy. I will have pity towards them and not bring or allow that judgment to come upon them. See, God doesn't want to bring judgment See, any of this thought about, you know, God's chose some, he hadn't chosen. Listen, God doesn't want to bring judgment or hell or separation from him to any human being on this earth that will ever be born, whoever has been. 
His will and his plan is for all. His desire is for all to come to faith and trust in his son, Jesus Christ. He has made the way. He has paved the way. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. If we put our faith and trust in him, no matter who we are, Romans 10, 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God's plan and purpose is to spend eternity with all of mankind, all of his creation. He wants, to, he wants them to live forever in glory with him. Heaven is a place for prepared people. He wants all of us to be there. But the fact of the matter is, is some will, like these nations, they will choose to go their own path and their own way. They'll choose wickedness and sinfulness. I, I will have mercy, I will have pity towards them and not bring or allow that judgment to come upon them. I think of, again, I said it last week, but I think of Nineveh, the nation that God had sent, wanted Jonah to go preach to, and they were a wicked, wicked city. Finally, after Jonah decided that he was going to go after he'd been uh, swallowed by the big fish, spit out goes to preach to Nineveh. He says about eight words to the city. And as he's saying those eight words, God's spirit moves and the people of Nineveh repent and turn back to God. And he goes on and he says in verse nine, when I pronounce prominence and blessing on a foreign nation or people, a Gentile nation, if you would, and their rule on this earth, their kingdom, if you would. He says to build and to plant it. To build there means to set up, to establish, to multiply with children, to bless them. Remember the nation of Israel when they were in Egypt? They're in bondage, they're enslaved, they're they are serving the Egyptians, yet what happened? God multiplied and blessed them above any else, anyone else, because his blessing, his hand was even upon them, his pity and his love was upon them and his care was upon them, and they grew and multiplied as a nation. To build, to set up, to establish, to multiply with children. And he says, and to plant it. Listen to what that word, that phrase, to plant it, means to strike in. And I thought of, a, I thought of uh, for some of us who, and, and I'm not a farmer by any stretch of the imagination, so don't anybody get any thought about that. I'm definitely not a farmer, okay? But I have drove some fence posts. Anybody else drove some fence posts? You got that, you got that, uh, uh, what is it called, the, the, the tamper and you got it up there and you put it up on top of the on top of the the T post and you you slam it down and you keep slamming it down you keep slamming it down you keep slamming it down until it gets to right where you want it and then you stop and it's it's in there. Let me tell you that'll make a man out of you. Do that long enough, you can say, "Well, preach, you need to do some of that." You're right, I do, I do. But he says, "Out to build and to plant it, to strike in as driving a post, to fix or to fasten." What he's, what he's saying here is uh, when I pronounce a blessing on a nation and, I, and my, my purpose and my uh, plan is to bless them and, and give them prominence, I will establish them. I will, I will fasten them on this earth in a way that is, uh, that is going to bring me honor and glory and bring blessing to them. And I tell you what, I, I can't help but think about America and when I think about that. When God, God has established this nation, it is a nation, it's not Israel, no, it's not Israel, I know that, it's not God's chosen people, but I'm telling you, we're a nation that has been blessed by God almost like no other. I'm just telling you, we, we should never forget that the nation, how God has, has protected us and promoted us. And I'm telling you, his, his plan and his purpose is still to do that. But we continue to go down this path of, of sinfulness and disobedience and destruction and turning away from him and raising a fist to him. How long do we think that God's mercy and God's pity is going to be on us as a nation? He says, listen, if I want to bring prominence and blessing to this nation, to a foreign nation, to build it, to plan it, and here's the little word again, if. Everybody say if. If. If it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice. 
on the condition that very nation or people that I, Yahweh, have, prom- have pronounced, have promised to set up, to establish, to multiply with children, to strike in as a fence post, to fix or to fasten where I place and planted them, commits or brings forth wickedness and goes down the path of sin before me in my sight and chooses not to hear, not to obey, not to be content with me and my way. See, that's the deal. You know, when I read that, I thought about that, not to be content. Can I just say this? America's not, we're not content. We have been blessed by God. God has, has, has built us and made us who we are around the world as a beacon of hope. Uh, and, and in so many ways, uh, countries look to us. I mean, that's why the borders are filling with, with many people is because this is a great place to live. Amen. Listen, if you don't believe it, just go somewhere else and live. All right. I'm telling you, there's none like it. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. We, we, we need to repent and turn back to God. If it does evil in my sight, that it does not obey my voice. I just thought that was interesting when, it, when the meaning there was to be content with me. And it's, it's the same for us as, as individual Christians. When we, think, when we think we don't have enough, what we're really saying is God's not, not blessing me with enough. He's not giving me enough, right? I want what he's got or I want what she's got. I, I need what they've got. What we're really saying is God's not giving me enough. He's not blessing me enough. We're not content. We're not content. Then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. He says to Jeremiah, because of their wickedness, their disobedience, their discontentment towards me, I, Yahweh, hands-on, personally involved, on-the-spot God, will be sorry and avenge myself of the blessings, the prosperity, the favor, the benefit I appointed or intended for that very nation or people to receive. So what we see here is God's dealing uh, with nations or peoples. Um, as the potter, he longs to fashion, to shape, to shape nations even that are useful and fulfill his purposes. Unlike the lifeless clay in the hands of the potter, nations can choose to make their path, the path of disobedience and judgment or the path of obedience and blessing. So, in reality, when we think about our country, and this me- it's really not the purpose of the, of the whole series was not to come to talk about our America, but I, there's, just, there's application here to our nation. See, God is, God is, he has offered us blessing. He has brought blessing. He has, offer, he has offered us prosperity. He's offered us peace and safety. He has offered us to live in a place like no other. Amen. Around the world, this would be known as the promised land, to be honest with you, to people. That's why they want to get here. But I'm telling you, all these things hang in the balance with God. He says, if you honor me, if you hear me, if you hear my voice, if you live in obedience, if you are content to be in my will, to live in my hands, I will bring good. I will bring blessing. I will bring prosperity. I'm not talking about some kind of prosperity gospel. I'm talking about the blessings that God brings to us each and every day.
Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34 reminds us righteousness. Everybody say righteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. See, for us to continue to receive the blessings of God, the mercy of God, the pity of God, the grace of God, we have to choose. We have to choose to stick with God, to be content with God, with God's hand that he has upon us, not only as a nation, but as a people. We sung a few minutes ago, mold me, fill me. What a precious song to sing and to think about as we think about being in the, pot, in the potter's hands. Look at the next verse there, verse number 11. Now, therefore, speak to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. God says, Jeremiah, I've showed you what I need to show you. You understand the message that I have for my people. He says, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, thus says the Lord. So we talked about his preeminence, and then we'll look at this one real quickly. We'll talk about his pity. Everybody say, pity. His pity here, uh, as we think about this, we read about it in, in his judgment to the, to the nations, if they're out of his will. Uh, pity is what he would, when it says he, he repented, God doesn't repent of anything. He, he simply, uh, because of the actions of, of those who he's uh, got a hold of and he's working in the life of, uh, he... Uh, he comes to a point to where, again, he is moved with pity and compassion on that person, on that nation, on that individual. And he uh, does not bring his judgment upon uh, the people or the person as well. But in verse 11, we see his pity as it talks about there. And it goes on and it says in that verse, uh, speak to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, here it is, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. God has told Jeremiah, These nations that are, that are not my people, they are foreign nations, they are Gentile nations. This is how I deal with them. So he's, what he's saying is, Here, listen, uh, you think you'll escape? Israel, you think you will escape my, my judgment and you'll escape my uh, my holding you accountable, if you would, to walking with me, to, to living with me, being content with me, being out of my will. He says, my judgment is coming to you, Judah, to you inhabitants of Jerusalem, even my people, even, even his chosen people. God does not wink at sin. God does not, does not overlook evil. He says two things there, and we'll be done. Behold, I am fashioning a what? A disaster. God's told Jeremiah what's happening. He's told him, listen, if, they, if, if you obey, if you listen, if you hear me, if you walk in my ways, uh, if you are content with me, uh, in, the, in the, the relationship that we have and you walk in my ways, then you'll get blessing, you'll get preference, you'll get, you'll get prosperity, you'll get peace, you'll get good from me. But here we see that he turns to his people and he says, listen, I am fashioning a disaster. What is he saying? He's saying, I know where you're at. I know your lifestyle. I know what, you're, what path you're taking. And I am fashioning. I am like the potter. He's, he, is, he is making. He is drawing it up. He is, he is working it out. The details. He's working out a disaster. 
And I'm just telling you, if this nation doesn't change that we live in right now, God is fashioning a disaster. God is not going to allow America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, the, the land of prosperity that everybody wants to come to. He's not going to continue to allow us to go down the path that we're going down right now. He is not. I am fashioning a disaster. He says, I am devising a plan. It's in the works. Jeremiah, tell the people. Tell the people, Jeremiah. Tell my people, Jeremiah. Tell the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Tell the people of Judah. Tell them that I am working on a plan and destruction is going to come. But then he says this. Return now. Everyone from his evil way. See, God wants to give pity. He wants to give grace. He wants to give mercy. He wants to bring blessing. God says, Jeremiah, judgment is coming. But I want to remind you that mercy and pity is available to you. Through returning, return now everyone from his evil way. Make a choice. See, today, every one of us in this room today, uh, we're going to come to a time of decision in just a moment. And we're going to decide to do one of two things. We're going to decide we're content with where we are with God. Or we're going to decide that, you know what? I'm content with where I am on my own. See, repentance, and it's not something preached about from the pulpits anymore. God help us. We don't like to talk about repentance. We don't like for anybody to tell us we do something wrong, right? I can't stand for my wife to tell me that I've done something wrong. Ask her. Now, it doesn't stop her, okay? It doesn't stop her. But I don't like to hear it. We went to Sam's yesterday, and, and uh, I'm in another room this morning, and, and I hear her, her a faint voice uh, in, in the pantry over there and says uh, uh, something. I, all I heard was uh, coffee. And uh, I bought, we bought the, the coffee yesterday at Sam's, this big old box of coffee. And she, I was supposed to get this one particular kind. And I got the wrong kind. I mean, it's like 30 bucks worth of coffee. I'm thinking, I guess I'm going to have to drink this coffee that I don't like or whatever. But I didn't like it because she called my hand to it. And I, I, in my mind, I, be, I immediately began to think about all kind of excuses, why I got that one, why I didn't get the right one, all this kind of stuff. It was supposed to be a color yellow, and obviously on the, on the box, it's orange. Maybe I had Tennessee Vols on my mind or something. I don't know. But I didn't like it. We don't like for anybody to tell us we've done wrong. We especially don't like for God to tell us and convict us and convince us that we're wrong. This nation we live in, we live in a, in a, again, a nation of blessing and prosperity for most people compared to any other nation in this world. And I'm telling you, we are ignoring the signs. We are ignoring God's call. We are ignoring God's appeal to us to repent and turn back to him and continuing to go down a path of destruction and I'm telling you, just like he told the nation of Israel there, I am fashioning a disaster. I am devising a plan. Listen, don't hear me preaching a doom and gloom message. Because I'm just telling you this. I know who's on the throne. And I know who's in charge. And I've read the back of the book, and I win. And you win if you know Jesus. That's the comfort that we have. But I'm just telling you, if we want God's pity and God's mercy, 
we have to repent. We have to turn away from our own way and go back to that starting point and let the potter get a hold of us again and begin to mold and to make and to fashion us into his purpose so that we can be useful to him and a blessing and a light to people around us. Let's pray. Father, we just, again, we come to this time of decision. It's, it's, God, it's not my time, it's your time. Uh, God, it's all about you. And Lord, I pray even now as we, we're allowing your spirit to speak to us, um, God, as your spirit, your word is spoken through your spirit. God, your spirit now is convicting and convincing us uh, of, he is showing us exactly who we are. And he's showing us who we're not. And he's calling us to, to repentance. He's calling us to turn. He's calling us to, to come back to you. God, I pray we'll do that today. God, maybe for folks in this room, there's some who needs to come for the first time and repent of their sins and, and invite Jesus Christ to come into their heart and life to save them, to make them a new creation, to walk and to be light. And, and Lord, to show, show uh, God your, your purpose and plan for all who come to know him. So God, I pray, Lord, this time of decision that God, we'd be obedient to you. And God, we'd recognize that, God, we have a choice. We choose the path of, of good and blessing. And Lord, as you give us prosperity, and Lord, you give us peace, and, and God, you walk with us, and, and you protect us, God, as our Lord and our Savior, and you give us salvation through your Son, Jesus. But God, there's another path. Lord, it's a path that, that some folks tend to choose, God, that is of, of enjoyment and, and of fulfillment in, on this earth and the things of this earth. God, help us to decide, Lord, to come to that point where we understand that, Lord, we want to be right in the center, right in the hands of the potter. And it's his name we pray. And all God's people said.